everyone. This is the second session of the sequence dance, the Paso Dina. We've got traveling spins to have a look at, all very exciting. Let's have a look. Before we begin with session two, let's have a quick recap of what we did in session one. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. moves of Paso Doble is the appel, that's the stomp that you hear every now and then in the moves. The Pasadena only has one of them and it's going to start our next figure. In order to perform an appel, we want to raise up onto our toes, lift one foot clean off the ground and then bring it down with a stomping action. We don't want to bend our knee as we're rising up. We want to keep our knees nice and straight. But then as we come down into the floor, that's when we have a bit of a bend of the knee. So rising up strongly onto the toes and then down into the appel. If you're doing the lead steps, the appel will always happen on the right foot. And if you're the follower, your appel will be performed by the left foot. we'll be focusing on today are the traveling spins. Let's have a look. The traveling spins have eight beats and the appel happens on the first one. On beat two we want to be ready to walk down the line of dance in promenade. So we're still in our closed position, we rise up onto our toes, perform our appel on one and then step out on two. So it's going to be the gentleman's left foot that starts you going down the line of dance and the lady's right foot. You'll notice we've both taken a forward step and we're both looking the same way. Step three is traveling in the same direction as step two. So we take an extra walk down that line. It's on step four that things start to become a little bit different. Let's have a look. Appel, walk, walk, and then the leaders start to cut in front of the ladies. Let's have a closer look at step four. If we perform those first four steps of our traveling spin along the side, you'll notice at the end that the gap that has been between us when we've been in our closed position narrows as Ian takes that step across my line. One, two, three, four. So we're really quite close at this point. Ladies, your right foot will have kept on going forward down that line while the gents have taken a sideways step across. Let's have a look at what the arms can be doing over those first four steps. As we go into our promenade position, you'll notice that they can come quite low, that hand that we're holding, but then at the end of it, it wants to be quite high as we go into a counter promenade position. So if we just do the first two beats of the traveling spin, we have our appel, and then the hand can come down for our first promenade walk. If you look at the motion that Ian's hand is making as he goes into that shape, it's coming in and down, and we're both flattening our palms, so we're not holding our hands palm to palm anymore. We can't do that. We've still got contact, but both our palms are facing down on an angle towards the ground. In order to create that promenade shape, Ian is extending his, what's that, your right side to go into it. By the time we get to the end of beat four, he will have extended the other side, and that's when the hand is coming up into the air again, just like it did when we did our natural movement. So we have a pel on one, two, the hands are low, three, we're stepping through, and the hand has started to shift up. So by the time we've taken that fourth step, the hands are quite high in the sky. A pel on one, step on two, 
step on three, round on four. And that rotation that we've started there is going to continue on into the rest of the movement. So that movement that Ian's taken on step four as he's cut across has started up a natural movement of both of us turning clockwise around each other. Step five is going to see the continuance of us turning together, but then the rest of the steps in the figure is going to have me turning by myself and Ian's going to help. So let's have a look and see what that looks like. We have appel on one, step on two, step on three, round on four, and five, and then I go for a turn by myself under the arm. Let's have a look at the leader's steps by themselves. It's quite important for the leaders to keep on progressing down the line towards the end of this figure. So let's have a look. We've got appel on one, step forward on two, and three. Ian's cutting across on four, but quite quickly he's wanting to step forward down the line again and keep on going for the remainder of that movement. Let's have a closer look at that footwork. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's have a look at the ladies' footwork now. So we have our appel on the left, step forward on the right, then the left, and another step forward on the right. This is the fourth step where the man is cutting across, but we still want to be stepping down the line. It's this one that will sort of spin us round. As the man takes his step forward, we'll suddenly be taking a backward step down the line, and we keep on turning in that way for one, two, three steps to complete the figure. Now that we've had a closer look at the footwork, let's go back to the upper body and see what's happening there. So we've already gone through to step four. Let's go to step five and just pause there and see what's happening. We have our appel, our walk, and the hands are low. The hand is starting to come up on four. In fact, it's very high on four. It's going to stay there as we go into five. That's Ian's step forward down through the line and his hand is starting to halo over my head to allow me to keep on turning. Let's have a look at it a little bit faster. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now Ian's right hand is busy as well. It's not just the left hand. His right hand stays with me and on my back almost all the way through my turn. He doesn't have to let go until right towards the end. And that helps stabilize me as I'm doing all of those turns. So the focus on the right hand now, we have one, two, three, four. It's on my back, it stays there, helps me round, and only comes away right on that last step. The timing for this figure is eight even counts. We don't have to worry about any syncopation, and it's just one foot after the other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's pretty much it, guys. Let's just have a quick look at how session one and session two fit together. Five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well done everyone. 
That completes the second session of the Pasodina. We've only got one more to complete it, and we'll be looking at a classic move, the Spanish lines next time, and a couple of variations to finish off. So we'll see you then. <laughs>